What happened to the colossal Buddha at Bamiyan? While the colossal Buddha at Bamiyan once rose nearly 200 feet in a specially carved niche, in the side of a mountain in the Hindu Kush region of Afghanistan, it, along with another massive, though slightly smaller, sculpture, were destroyed by the Taliban in 2001. Originally constructed between the 2nd and 5th centuries, the style of the monumental work was influenced by the many cultures of the region including China and India, and was once brightly painted with layers of paint and lime plaster, which resulted in a semi-transparent look influenced by the Gupta style. The colossal Buddha was not the only Buddhist sculpture destroyed by the Taliban. Almost all Buddhist art in the nearby region was targeted, a controversial example of iconoclastic action. What is the Queen Mother Pendant Mask? The Queen Mother Pendant Mask likely represents Idia, the mother of Oba Isaji, who ruled Benin between 1504 and 1550. Nearly 10 inches tall, it is made of carved ivory and was meant to be worn at the hip. The face of Idia is skillfully carved in a highly naturalistic style, with powerful eyes and stylized hair. Along the top and bottom of the mask are carved images of Portuguese soldiers, with whom Benin had an amicable trade relationship. The solider images alternate with images of the mudfish which was symbolic of wealth, creativity, and the sea. A second, nearly identical, pendant mask was also carved from the same piece of ivory. One is in the British Museum while the other is at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. What is Aegean art? The term Aegean art refers to the art of three major Mediterranean cultures which predate ancient Greece. The Cycladic culture, the Minoans, and the Mycenaeans. Together, these groups are referred to as the Aegean civilization and flourished during the Bronze Age. C. 3000 to 1200 BCE. The Cycladic culture established itself on a group of small islands known as the Cyclades, while the Minoans lived on the island of Crete. The later Mycenaeans were based on mainland Greece. Aegean art is quite enigmatic and is characterized by lively sculptures and wall paintings which mirror the natural world and the warmth of the Mediterranean. Who is Cindy Sherman? Cindy Sherman, 1954, is a postmodern photographer known for her conceptual manipulations of media images and her use of self-portraiture. Sherman's photographs explore feminine identity and question the way women are portrayed in art and popular culture. In her series untitled film stills, from the late 1970s and early 1980s. 
Sherman takes on the role of a female icon, a blonde bombshell such as Marilyn Monroe, and other stereotypical cliches. Her characters range from self-aware to subdued to comical. Her later work takes on art history. In Untitled No. 224, Sherman becomes Bacchus, the ancient god of wine as imagined in the work of Baroque artist Caravaggio. Her eyes peering out from under a crown of grape leaves. Through her work, Cindy Sherman becomes the composite of the many images and film references she makes. Leading the viewer to question the reality or artificiality of not only the artist's identity, but of the way in which subjects are portrayed in art and popular culture. What is suprematism? Suprematism developed between 1913 and 1915 by Russian artist Casimir Malevich 204, 1878-1935, was concerned with pure aesthetics and therefore promoted total abstraction and freedom from realism, politics, and the past. Suprematist paintings often depict geometric abstractions. Malevich was interested in the square as a pure form, and much of his work focuses on rectangular composition. Such as Black Square, 1915, and Suprematist Composition, White on White, 1918. Other paintings, such as Suprematist Composition conveying the feeling of a mystic wave from outer space. 1917 were visual attempts to communicate with the subconscious. Other artists associated with suprematism were Ivan Puni, 1894-1956, and Lyubo Popova, 1889-1924, among others. What is Mozan art? Mozan art is a Romanesque style of art greatly influenced by classical sources and associated with the Meuse Valley region, which reaches from France to the Netherlands along the path of the Meuse River. The terms encompasses architecture, painting, and sculpture. Though 12th century Meuse Valley sculptors are particularly known for their mastery of metalworking, Mozan art is considered less abstract than the Romanesque art of other regions, featuring realistic anatomy and proportions, as opposed to the elongated figures of Gisli Bertuz. What is the difference between the art of the many cultures of Africa? Africa is an enormous continent, and there is huge cultural diversity among the peoples of Africa. Each culture produced art with distinctive forms and styles based on religious beliefs local materials, and ritual use. The following is a list of selected cultures, their geographic region, and an example of the types of art they produce. What is Hunter's Mural?
Hunter's Mural is a name given to petroglyphs located in Nine Mile Canyon in Utah. The petroglyphs are an example of rock art, in ancient Greek. Petros means rock and glyph means writing or drawing, attributed to the Fremont culture of the American. Southwest Hunter's mural depicts a bow hunter aiming his weapon at a flock of bighorn sheep. The Fremont used a unique method to create these rock 92 images. The canyon walls were naturally stained a dark brown by bacteria. The Fremont scraped this brown varnish away to reveal a lighter shade of rock underneath and form a picture. Petroglyphs similar to Hunter's mural can be found across the American West and Southwest. Some American rock art is thought to date from as early as 7000 BCE. Why did Damien Hirst preserve a tiger shark in formaldehyde solution? Damien Hirst's preserved shark piece might not mean much without its Title The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living, 1991 Hirst 1965, garnered early critical success as a member of the Young British Artists and works in a variety of media, making paintings, prints, sculptures, and installations. Hearst's pickled shark, like much of his work, features dead animals and is thematically focused on death and the frailty or fragility of human existence. The once fierce and dynamic shark is now frozen. His dangerous teeth preserved in formaldehyde and kept under glass. A living, breathing beast is now as immobile and impersonal as any other example of ready-made pop art. Hearst's preserved shark has been criticized by many as a stunt. And by others who claim Hearst's work shouldn't even be considered art at all. But, Hearst has been very successful overall, both critically and financially. Earning millions of dollars for his pieces, as well as the prestigious British Turner Prize for Art in 1995. What is a Ngatu? A Ngatu is a royal Tongan bark cloth made by women. The Kingdom of Tonga is a group of over 100 islands located southeast of Fiji and southwest of Samoa. Fiji and Samoa also have bark cloth design traditions. Textiles such as the Ngatu are highly prized items and are given as gifts during ceremonies and special occasions. Ngatu are hand-painted, rubbed with dye, stenciled, and perfumed. Usually deep brown, black, and beige in color, they can feature highly abstract designs or depict naturalistic images such as fish, or other sea life. What is existentialist art? After World War II, European artists, writers, and thinkers struggled to come to terms with not only the physical destruction wrought by war, but with its psychological toll. 
existentialism was a philosophical response popularized by French thinkers such as Jean-Paul Sartre. 1905-1980, whose treat is being and nothingness. 1943, described the anxiety and meaningless of existence, as well as the pursuit of authenticity in life. Existentialism was a powerful influence on post-war art in Europe and its themes. Were explored by artists such as Francis Bacon, Alberto Giacometti, and Jean Dubuffet. Did Chinese painting change during the Qing dynasty? The Qing dynasty was a Manchurian imperial power that ousted the previous Ming rulers and controlled China from 1644 to 1911. For many Chinese, especially Ming loyalists, this political shift was dramatic and frightening. However, although the Manchurians were a foreign power, they adopted many Chinese art traditions favored by the Ming. Multiple schools of painting developed during the Qing era, including the Orthodox school, which drew inspiration from the earlier literati painters, and the individualist school. Individualist painters focused on expressing their personal feelings during the tumultuous time of the Qing takeover. Leading painters of the era included Shi Tao, 1642-1707, an individualist painter who traced his ancestry to the first Ming emperor. When the Qing took over Beijing, he fled and went into hiding, and then became a Chan Buddhist monk. He wrote extensively on art theory, including his most well-known tract. Sayings on painting from Monk Bitter Gourd, which espoused the significance of the single brush stroke. His work balances expressive energy with soft tones. And is notable for its tendency toward abstraction and use of negative space to create a sense of depth. Shi Tao was one of the most famous individualist painters because of his innovative manipulations of traditional forms of Chinese painting. What was the Armory Show? In 1913, the Armory Show introduced America to European modernism. The Armory Show was actually called the International Exhibition of Modern Art, which was held at the 69th Regiment Armory in New York City. It was organized by the Association of American Painters and Sculptors and displayed a range of styles. From American realism to Impressionism to European modernism. Although European modernism made up a small portion of the art in the exhibition, it made shockwaves among American viewers and critics. The Fave works by Matisse, and the Cubism of Picasso and Brock were highly criticized. Marcel Duchamp's nude descending the staircase was deemed to look like a pile of twigs. Despite this sensational backlash, which attracted thousands of visitors to both the New York and the additional Chicago location, the Armory Show made an unprecedented impact on American avant-garde artists and collectors. 
marking the beginning of modernism's dominance of the American art scene throughout much of the 20th century. What is a vault? Common in medieval church architecture, vaults come in many forms. Essentially, a vault is an arched roof structure that covers an interior space. A semicircular barrel vault, also known as a tunnel vault, is the simplest form. A groin vault is the name given to two intersecting barrel vaults. Who invented photography? The process of photography, in which an image is fixed by recording light through chemical and now digital, means, was not invented by a single individual. The concept had been around for thousands of years in the form of the camera obscura. A small, dark box with a tiny hole on one side that allows light to enter. The light reveals an image from outside the box, which is either reflected onto a surface with a small mirror, or passes through onto a wall. A large-scale camera obscura can even be made in a darkened room. Artists used the camera obscura to view small details in a scene. Scholars hypothesize that Johannes Vermeer and other 18th century artists may have used such a device to achieve such heightened detail in their work. The problem for artists, however, was to take the image produced by the camera obscura and make it permanent. The first person to do this was Louis Jacques Mondé Daguerre. A painter. What is the Isenheim altarpiece? The Isenheim altarpiece, c. fifteen ten to fifteen fifteen is a highly realistic altarpiece painting done by the German painter Matthias Grunewald, who was a painter at the court of the Archbishop of Mainz. The work is complex, incorporating exterior paintings on the wings of the altarpiece with interior paintings that are revealed upon opening. The exterior subject is the crucifixion of Christ. Painted in gruesome detail and emphasizing Christ's suffering against a dark background. His fingers are bent and broken and his emaciated body hangs heavily from the cross. The interior paintings are completed on multiple panels and include the Annunciation. The Virgin and Child with Angels, and the Resurrection. These interior works are brightly colored and emphasize hope and joy over suffering. The physical act of opening the door is symbolic of the salvation that comes from Christ's sacrifice. The Eisenheim altarpiece is emotionally expressive and a Powerful example of the role of art in the Christian tradition. Who was Bilzid? Kamal al-Din Bilzid, 
referred to simply as Bihazid, was one of the most famous Persian manuscript painters during the 15th century. He was born around 1450 in the city of Herat, in modern-day Afghanistan. He worked for royal courts under both Timurid and Safavid rule. The Timurid rulers descended from Genghis Khan, and were succeeded by the Safavids as rulers of Iran. Bihazid's paintings are characterized by vivid color, dynamic detail, and warping perspective. His work notably includes representations of figures. Something more common in Persian and Indian painting than other Islamic art. One of Bihazid's most famous miniature paintings is Seduction of Yusuf, c. 1488, a story included in both the Bible and the Quran. In the story, Yusuf, Joseph, is seduced by Zalaikha, the wife of Potiphar. According to the Persian version of the tale, Zalaikha led Yusuf through seven rooms of her palace, locking the door of each room behind her. In the final room, she propositioned Yusuf. But he was able to escape when the doors were miraculously unlocked. In the painting, zigzagging beige panels contain the actual Arabic text of the story at the top, bottom, and in the middle of the manuscript page. Zalaikha's palace is made up of intricately decorated multicolored panels connected by angled, polygonal staircases. This geometric, two-dimensional painting gives the illusion of three-dimensional space and is a masterpiece of Persian manuscript painting. Who was Angelica Kaufman? Angelica Kaufman, 1741-1807, was an important neoclassical artist in Britain who studied in Rome. Became friends with Joshua Reynolds, and co-founded the Royal Academy of Arts in 1768, though. She was forbidden to study the male nude, a fundamental part of academic training to this day. Despite this, Kaufman painted history paintings, which were held in higher regard than any other form of painting. And was the only 18th century woman artist to do so. Kaufman produced Rococoesque, neoclassical history paintings, including Ariadne abandoned by Theseus. 1774, A Sleeping Nymph Watched by a Shepherd, 1780, and Cornelia presenting her children as her treasures, c. 1785, which tells a story in the life of one of the most powerful women in ancient Rome. Many of her paintings were reproduced as prints. And she had great success as a portraitist for aristocratic patrons. What is Donatello's David? Donatello, Donato di Niccolo di Beto di Bardi, c. 1386-1466, was considered a genius of the early Renaissance. He had a long career as a sculptor and is responsible for the famous Bronze David. 
the first life-size male nude sculpture made since antiquity. Donatello's David is surrounded in mystery art historians do not who the patron was, for example. Though it was placed in a courtyard at the Medici Palace home of the ruling family in Florence at the time. It is thought that the noble David symbolizes the recent Florentine military. Victory over neighboring city-state Milan, in 1428. In this piece. Donatello represents this Old Testament hero as a young, nude man in early adolescence. His hips are tilted in a confident contraposto pose and he stands. With knees slightly bent, over the dismembered head of his foe, Goliath. A large feather from Goliath's helmet can be seen reaching high up the inside of David's leg. Donatello's David is at once a reflection of the classical tradition of sculpture making. And an erotic depiction of youthful heroism. It is quite different from another famous David done by Michelangelo. What is sculpture? Whereas graphic arts like drawing and painting are two-dimensional, sculpture is three-dimensional. An artist who works in sculpture is called a sculptor. Traditionally, sculptors use different processes including carving, modeling, and casting. Though contemporary sculptors sometimes use construction, also known as assemblage, methods to make their works. Different materials are used depending on which technique the artist employs. Stone, such as marble, as well as wood, are often used for carving. Michelangelo's famous David sculpture was carved from Carrara marble. A beautiful grey-white stone from Tuscany. Modeling requires softer, more malleable materials such as clay. In the 1970s, over 7. 000 terracotta soldiers were discovered in the tomb of the ancient Chinese Emperor Qin. Terracotta, which means baked earth, is commonly used for modeling sculpture, especially in the ancient world. One of the more complex types of sculpting is casting. A labor-intensive process that relies on metals such as bronze and other metal alloys. In a technique known as lost wax bronze casting, molten bronze is poured into a wax mold. Which forms a negative image of the final sculpture. Once the bronze is cool, the wax mold is heated and removed, revealing a bronze form. Different versions of this process can produce both solid and hollow sculptures. Casting also allows for multiple copies of a work. For example, Auguste Rodin's 19th century masterpiece, The Thinker, has been recast many times. Sculpture can range from tiny to monumental in size, and can be both representational and abstract. Sculpture made from a wide range of materials can be found all over the world. What are the major periods of Greek art? The Greek civilization developed in the Mediterranean before 1000 B. 
CE and flourished until conquered by the Romans in the 1st century BCE. During this thousand year time span, the Greeks produced art and architecture. Considered to be the foundation of all Western art to come after it. Scholars divide Greek art history into a number of periods, or categories. The most significant of which include the geometric, archaic, classical, and Hellenistic periods. What is the Venus of Urbino? Titian painted the Venus of Urbino for Guido Baldo della Rovera. The Duke of Urbino, in 1538. The painting is unabashedly erotic. Depicting a nude woman reclining on a disheveled white sheet covering deep red cushions. Her long, red hair sweeps around her neck and her hand rests gently along her hips. Only partially covering her sex. She stares teasingly from within the frame, a tiny dog curled near her feet. In the background of the painting, Two women appear to be rifling through a chest, collecting clothing. There is no question, Titian has created a goddess. The provocative painting, part of a long tradition of female nudes in the history of art. Influenced artists even hundreds of years later. Manet's similarly bold, Olympia, 1863, would not exist without the Venus of Urbino. Who is Jeff Koons? Jeff Koons, 1955, is a controversial, highly successful contemporary artist known for monumental brightly colored sculpture and art produced by large teams of assistants. A former commodities broker who trained at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and the Maryland Institute College of Art, Coons creates art that critiques commercialism. For example, he displayed vacuum cleaners in clear, perspex boxes, in a series called The New. 1979, and later began making enormous, highly polished balloon animal sculptures that were praised for their technical virtuosity, and criticized for their over-the-top decadence. Koons is also famous for his large topiary sculpture, Puppy, 1992, and his Rococo-esque sculpture. Michael Jackson and Bubbles, 1988, a golden, ceramic sculpture of the King of Pop with his pet monkey. Kuhn's art is polarizing because it blurs the line between high art and spectacle. Which some say is exactly the point. How do you read a work of art? When a piece of street art catches your eye, or you find yourself walking slowly through the rooms of an art museum. You may not necessarily feel the need to read a work of art. Art moves us and we respond emotionally to the beautiful, disturbing, and mysterious sights around us. A portrait of a mother and a child, such as Mary Cassatt's painting. The Bath, 
might cause you to reflect on your own familial relationships. Or, you may find yourself curiously transfixed by the sheer enormity of Clay's Oldenburg and Kusch van Bruggen's 5,500 pound shuttlecock. Perched precariously in the garden of the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, Missouri. Sometimes, however, we want to dig deeper and investigate the meaning of art. What is the difference between relief sculpture and sculpture in the round? A relief sculpture is a type of sculpture in which a design projects from the surface of the sculpted material. Like a rubber stamp, though not necessarily flat. Relief sculpture can be seen from only one vantage point, usually straight on. Sculpture in the round is freestanding and finished on all sides. A viewer can move all the way around a sculpture in the round. And is able to look at the work from multiple vantage points. What is the ecstasy of ST? Teresa? The ecstasy of ST. Teresa is a central sculpture in the Cornero Chapel in the Church of Santa Maria della Vittoria in Rome. It is considered to be a masterpiece of Baroque sculpture and was made by Gian Lorenzo Bernini between 1645 and 1652. The sculpture depicts Saint Teresa of Avila, who in life experienced powerful visions. In her writing, Saint Teresa describes an encounter with an Angel who stabbed her in the 138 heart with a golden spear. She believed the experience was an encounter with God. Bernini's complex sculpture, which dominates the chapel space, depicts this vision. Within an elevated niche, Saint Teresa seems to float amidst her undulating robes. Her toes peek out from underneath the mass of fabric. Curling in a combination of pain and pleasure during this divine encounter. Her mouth is open and her head tilts back as a small angel gingerly grasps at her clothes with. One hand and grips a golden spear in the other, the spear points directly at her breast. The. Figures appear to float because they are supported by a hidden cantilevered mass of marble. Mirroring the spear, bronze beams of light descend upon the pair from above. Helping to frame the scene from within the niche and emphasize the presence of the divine. In other parts of the chapel, marble bystanders watch from theater boxes, in awe. The sculpture is like a frozen theater piece. It is a highly illusionistic depiction of the pleasure and pain of Saint Teresa. And a surprisingly sensual representation of the divine. What is the Pyramid of the Sun? The Pyramid of the Sun is an Aztec site from pre-classical Mexico. Located in Teotihuacan, near modern-day Mexico City. With a population of 200,000 people, 
the city of Teotihuacan reached its peak. Between 350 and 650 CE similar in size to the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt. The Pyramid of the Sun was the most important architectural monument in the city. Aligned with the Avenue of the Dead. The structure was over 200 feet high and 720 feet on each side at the base. Made up of a series of steps, a stairway led to the top where a temple used to sit. The exterior of the building would have been painted. And faced a smaller temple called the Pyramid of the Moon. What is the hours of Jean d'Evreux? The Hours of Jean d'Evreux is a 14th century book of hours illuminated by an artist. Named Jean Pucel and was a gift from French King Charles IV to his third wife, Jean d'Evreux. The book may be tiny in terms of physical dimension. Only a few inches, in fact, but is big in terms of artistic innovation. It is known for its grisale illustrations which feature a grey. Monochrome style that results in unique, sculpturesque figures. The illuminations, which often incorporate examples of Gothic architecture into the background, are innovatively rendered using spatial recession, creating a sense of depth not seen in earlier medieval painting. Who is Jenny Halzer? Jenny Halzer, 1950, is a conceptual artist known for text-based installations and public displays. Her earliest work was Truisms, 1977-1979, which consisted of anonymous posters hung up around New York City with one-line phrases such as protect me from what I want. Abuse of power comes as no surprise, and expiring for love is beautiful but stupid. Along with displaying these truisms on posters, Halzer carved words into public benches, created t-shirts, hats, and more. Later in her career, she began to work with LED, light emitting diode displays, which has garnered her much critical and popular success. For example, she created a 65 foot wide permanent LED display in the lobby of 7 World Trade Center in which text slowly scrolls. Halzer writes many of her own texts, and during her later career she began to appropriate language from international poets as well as text from unclassified U.S. documents, including interrogation transcripts from Abu Ghraib in Iraq. In this case, Halzer projects private words in a public space. Emphasizing the difference between private and public communication. What is the art of Neolithic China? In China, the Neolithic period lasted from 10,000 B. CE to 2000 BCE multiple different cultural groups created art during this time. 
each with a distinctive style. The Yangshao culture, which developed along the Yellow River, produced painted pottery. Before the invention of the potter's wheel, by hand coiling clay into a shape and then smoothing the edges and decorating the vessels with red and black paint using a brush. Most of these earthenware vessels were decorated with either animal motifs or complex abstract danes. Another style of Neolithic pottery is associated with the Himadu, Don Kao. Long Shan, and Liangzhu cultures, which were established across many regions of China. This style is known for tripod shaped pottery and jade carving. One of the most important forms of art in China. Common forms of Neolithic jade include the bai, disc, and the kong. A short rectangular column with a hole through the center and decorated corners. Because of the lack of written records, the meaning of both the bai and the kong forms are unknown. Who was seen in the grate? Seen in the Great, c. 1489-1588, whose full name was Coca Mimar Sinan Aga. Was arguably the most famous architect in Islamic history, designing over 300 buildings. Including the Mosque of Salim II, which is considered his masterpiece. Also known as the Salimiyye Mosque. The Mosque of Salim II was built between 1569 and 1575 in Edirne, Turkey. Sinan designed it when he was almost 80 years old. And his goal was to surpass the great architecture of the previous Byzantine Empire. He created a larger dome than that of the Hagia Sophia from base to crown. The building's interior is a masterwork of mathematical proportion and geometry. Fusing an octagon with a dome-covered square, with four half-domes in each corner. What are Bisjay poles? The Bisjay pole is an important ritual wood carving made by the Asmat people of the western portion of New Guinea. The Bisjay pole is a tall, narrow ancestor pole depicting ancestor spirits standing upon one another and can be approximately 20 feet high. The Bisjay pole plays an important role in the Ismat tradition of head hunting, and is used in ceremonies related to the cycle of life, death, and warfare. The Ismat make the Bisjay pole from sago palm because, according to legends, as Matt ancestors were first created from sago palms by a divine hero named Fumaripats J, the first being on earth. This fact emphasizes the Asmat correlation between the human body and the tree. By extension, the human head is symbolically represented as fruit. On the pole itself, carved images of birds eating fruit represent the head hunter who eats the brain of a warrior he has captured. Large, protruding fins at the top of the Bisjay pole are phallic symbols of power and virility.
Who was Giorgio Vasari? Giorgio Vasari, 1511-1574, was a mediocre painter and a more successful architect. But his real legacy was the biographies he wrote about important Renaissance artists. Lives of the most eminent painters, sculptors, and architects, often referred to as lives of the artists. It is through Vasari that we are introduced to the early Renaissance artists Simabo and Giotto. And here the details of disputes between Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. The book covers artists from Fra Angelico to Titian, Donatello to Salviati. Despite the book being filled with bias towards Italian artists, embellished stories, and historical inaccuracies. The impact his work had on art history and Renaissance scholarship cannot be ignored. How was single-point perspective invented? Quite literally a Renaissance man, Filippo Brunelleschi was a goldsmith. Clockmaker, mathematician, Latin scholar, and architect. It just so happens that he also invented single-point perspective. One of the most important technical innovations of the Renaissance. Also known as linear perspective. Single-point perspective is a mathematical system based on natural observation. Under the rules of single-point perspective, distant objects are depicted smaller than objects closer to the viewer. While the far edges of similarly shaped objects appear shorter near the edges. This warping of forms is known as foreshortening. Bruno Lesci invented the idea of a picture plane, in which he imagined the frame of a painting as a window through which the viewer sees an illusion of three-dimensional space. The artist lays out the scene according to a grid pattern, and every object in the picture. For example architectural objects like roof lines and walls, follow invisible lines called orthogonals which converge at a single point, known as the vanishing point, usually at eye level to the viewer. Strangely enough, Bruno Lesci was primarily interested in perspective not as a painter, but as an architect. His goal was to design an interior that drew a person's attention through a space, such as a church nave. Towards the altar, which he did effectively in his design for the Santo Spirito in Florence in 1434. Who was Fra Angelico? Like Mossixio, Fra Angelico, whose nickname means the Angelic Brother in Italian, was known for his frescoes. His real name was Guido di Pietro and he was famous not only for his art, but also for his modesty and his devotion to Christianity. Starting in 1435, Fra Angelico was hired to paint the interior of the Dominican Monastery of San Marco in Florence. For nearly ten years, the artist painted in the walls of each monk's cell. 
as well as other walls within the monastery. The painting on the inside of cell 3 depicts the Annunciation, a scene in which the angel Gabriel visits Mary to tell her she will be the mother of Jesus Christ. Fra Angelico's figures are graceful and elegant. Gabriel bows gently, his arms crossed over his chest and his wings brightly colored. Mary is seated to the right, framed by the architectural forms of her room. She also crosses her hands over her chest. A movement that both indicates modesty and forms a dove-like symbol of the Holy Spirit. The scene is simple, pious, and appears to glow with divine light. What is Fluxus? Fluxus is a difficult to describe, anti art movement, sometimes called Neo Dada. Promoted informally by an international group of artists who were interested in the relationship between art and life. The term Fluxus was invented in 1961 by the Lithuanian-American artist George Maciunas. The word itself comes from Latin and means to flow. Artists associated with Fluxus include, among others, Joseph Buys, 1921-1986, George Brecht, 1926-2008. Nam June Paik, 1932-2006, Yoko Ono, 1933, and Lamont Young, 1935. An experimental composer and performance artist. The artist Dick Higgins, 1938-1998, created a rubber stamp upon which he explained Fluxus as a way of doing things. A tradition, and a way of life and death, as quoted in Dempsey 229. Fluxus art was inherently collaborative. Artists work together to create pieces by sending art through the mail, for example. Collaborative Fluxus festivals or Flux concerts featured experimental music and other types of short. Fast-paced performances. Fluxus defies narrow. Description. It was intended to 244 be open, simple, and have a sense of humor. What is the Gupta style? Associated with art produced during the reign of Gupta rulers, who ruled in eastern India from c. 320 to 450 CE, the Gupta style is characterized by naturalistic. Though idealized, images of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas in both painting and sculpture. A great example of the Gupta style is the wall painting of the Bodhisattva known as the beautiful Padmapani, painted in the late 5th century. Padmapani is shown as serene and relaxed, withdrawn from the material world swirling around him. Strong outlines emphasize the form of the figure, but the rest of the body is smooth and anatomically undefined. With downcast eyes, the painting exhibits the Gupta emphasis on naturalism, balance, and spiritual detachment. Who was Nam June Paik?
Nam Jun Paik, 1932-2006, was a Korean-American artist who worked in many different media. Creating videotapes, paintings, sculptures, robots, laser installations, and writing. He is best known as an innovator in video art. Paik joined Fluxus while studying in Germany and was later inspired by the experimental composer and artist John Cage, who he met and befriended in 1958. Paik used the video as a structural component in his sculptures and installations. For example, he made a cello by stacking television sets and stringing them together with cello strings. He also made a bra out of two television screens in a work titled, TV Bra for Living Sculpture, 1969. Which he designed to be worn by cello player and collaborator, Charlotte Mormon, while she performed. Pake's video flag X. 1985, is another example of video used in sculpture a series of television screens are arranged in a grid pattern to display an image of the American flag. What is perspective? Perspective is a system artists use to create the illusion of three-dimensional space. There are multiple different types of perspective techniques. Including single-point perspective and atmospheric perspective. Single-point perspective, also known as linear perspective was invented in the 15th century by the Italian architect Filippo Bruno Lesci. He used a system of parallel lines converging upon a central point called the vanishing point. Using this system, the space within a painting appears to be the continuation of real space. Atmospheric perspective relies on color and form rather than lines, to create an illusion of three-dimensional space. Using this technique, forms in the background are smaller and blurrier than objects in the foreground. Forms overlap one another, and the sky is painted so that it transitions from blue to white. What is the meaning of the persistence of memory? The persistence of memory, 1931, is Salvador Dali's most famous painting. In this work, Dali depicts languid, melting clocks draped over an arid, desert landscape. Unlike many of the other large, abstract works being produced at the time, the persistence of memory is quite small, not much bigger than an ordinary piece of paper. It is highly detailed and uncomfortably realistic for such a strange picture. Against a smooth and seemingly infinite horizon, are four liquid clocks. At the center, one of these clocks, really more of a pocket watch, curls over what appears to be a boneless, fish-like face. Another clock oozes off the side of a table-like surface, while another rests upside down, black ants aggressively gathered atop it. Dolly himself compared the objects in the painting to melting camembert cheese. And the entire scene is fixed in an impossible state of timeless transformation.
although there can be no definitive definition of this painting. The work is a meditation on the unfixed nature of time and space. What are some of the important concepts of postmodernism? Understanding some of the key terms of postmodernism will help to get a grasp of what it is that postmodern artists do. Pluralism Postmodern art is not just varied, it is pluralistic. Meaning it reflects the perspectives of many different ethnic, racial, religious, gender, and sexual groups. Postmodern art is also pluralistic because it reflects many different artistic styles. And often incorporates features of various art movements from the past and present. Appropriation Postmodern art often copies or borrows elements and images from other works of art to form something new. Consider contemporary television comedies such as The Simpsons and Family Guy. These shows frequently refer to, or parody, other television shows or elements of popular culture. Familiarity with these references is essential in order to get the joke. Deconstruction Postmodern deconstruction is a method of taking apart a unified whole to expose its underlying structure. It is used as a form of analysis or interpretation. It is popular amongst postmodern artists who are suspicious of the uniformity and overarching structure of modernism. In this way, postmodernism is like the child who continues to ask why. Kitsch many postmodern artists challenge the distinction between good and bad taste. The word kitsch traditionally refers to ugly objects that reflect bad taste. Such as souvenirs, or overly sentimental objects. Examples of kitsch include decorative garden gnomes or plates decorated with the images of the British royal family. Postmodern artists embrace kitsch and frequently incorporate kitsch into their work. What is Aboriginal art? Aboriginal art is the art of the indigenous people of Australia, whose artistic traditions continue to thrive to this day. Aboriginal art includes rock art, body art, bark paintings, fiber arts, and portable sculptures. Aboriginal people are traditionally nomadic. Aboriginal peoples have lived in Australia for the last 40,000 years and their art is closely connected to their religious beliefs and complex mythology. The Aboriginal spiritual world is called Jakarpa, which is usually translated into English as the dreaming or the dream time, and emphasizes the connection between spiritual powers and place. It is important to note that Aboriginal artists are not creating anything new or original, but are reinterpreting designs and artistic elements that have been passed down by spirit ancestors. Many contemporary Aboriginal artists now use acrylic paint to create traditional dot paintings or bark paintings. 
the work of 20th century Aboriginal artist Clifford Possum Tijapal Jury, 1932-2002. Help bring Aboriginal art to the attention of the international art world and it is now part of major museum and gallery collections around the globe. What is conceptual art? Conceptual art had existed in various forms for decades. But solidified into a major movement in the 1960s and 1970s. Inspired greatly by Dada and the art of Marcel Duchamp. Conceptual art is concerned with the intellectual process of art. The artist Sol Lewitt's 1967 article, Paragraphs on Conceptual Art, did much to explain the foundations of the movement, an idea alone can be a work of art. Conceptual art is extremely diverse and a large number of international artists are associated with it. Conceptual art can be anything from written documents to photographs, videos to performances. The work of Belgian artist Marcel Brutheers, 1924-1976, is a good example of conceptual art. Brutheers was a writer, filmmaker, and visual artist. Perhaps his most celebrated piece. Musée d'art moderne, Département de Eagles, Museum of Modern Art, Department of Eagles, 1968. Was an installation at his home in Brussels that described a completely fictitious museum. Besides the fact that Brutheers created posters, descriptions, and signs, the museum did not exist. The central idea of this piece was to question the authority of the museum as an institution. Conceptual art continues to be a major part of contemporary art today. Who was Chimabui? In the lives of the artists, Giorgio Vasari describes the 13th century. Artist Simabo as the man who shed the first light on the art of painting. He is credited with innovations in naturalism, his art bridges the gap between the flat Byzantine style of painting and the more realistically proportioned style associated with the Renaissance. Comparing the work of Simabo and his apprentice, Giotto, the difference is clear. Simabo's panel painting, Virgin, and Child Enthroned, c. 1280, depicts the Virgin Mary and Infant Christ surrounded by saints. The work is a blend of Gothic, Byzantine, style and newer Renaissance techniques. The folds of the drapery worn by the Virgin Mary are defined by gold lines. The figures of the saints are elongated and thin. Infant Christ appears to have the proportions of an adult. Despite the flatness and the stylized forms, Simabo's scene is warm and real. The figures are naturally proportioned and their faces are thoughtful engaging, and diverse. Giotto's painting of the same scene represents a major shift away from Gothic styles and towards more realistic images of figures and of three-dimensional space. The solid form of Mary's body can be seen through her heavy 
blue robes and the infant Christ sits firmly upon her lap. The figures in Giotto's Virgin and Child enthroned are realistically modeled and Mary's throne appears to extend back into real space. What is installation art? The term installation art developed in the 1970s and refers to art designed for a particular space. Usually an indoor space, and is usually temporary. Installation art can incorporate sculpture, video, performance, and mixed media. In a way, installation art conceives of a museum or gallery exhibition space as a work of art in and of itself. And viewer interaction with the space is at the core of the form. Installations often have specific themes and messages and can be designed by a single artist or a group. Artists who have created notable installations include Rachel White Reed, A.I. Weiwei, and Jenny Halzer. The artist Sylvan Gear even includes elements of smell in her installation work. For more examples, see the chapter on contemporary art 1960s to present. What is ancient Egypt? Ancient Egypt was a powerful civilization in northeastern Africa, which developed along the Nile River around 5,000 years ago and lasted for over 3,000 years. During that long span of time, art in Egypt stayed very consistent in terms of style, form, and subject. Egypt was ruled by powerful dynasties led by a pharaoh. These dynasties are organized by scholars into three distinct king toms, the Old, Middle, and New Kingdoms, as well as intermediate periods and a late period, which lasted until 332 BCE. When Egypt was conquered by Alexander the Great. In 30 BCE, Egypt became part of the Roman Empire. Polytheistic religion was an important part of daily life in ancient Egypt. And the pharaohs were considered divine rulers. The art and culture of ancient Egypt greatly influenced other cultures throughout history. And we continue to be fascinated by the culture's richly decorated tombs, pyramids, and other art objects. What is the theater at Epidaurus? The theater at Epidaurus, c. 350 BCE, was an example of ancient Greek civic architecture meant to be enjoyed by the general public. The art of the theater was an important part of ancient Greek culture and religion. As religious ceremonies were incorporated with music and dance, and performed in public spaces. Greek drama, including tragedies and comedies, were performed in outdoor spaces like the theater at Epidaurus. At the heart of the theater was the circular orchestra, the central performance area. Fifty-five rows of semicircular tiered seats were carved into a hillside, which allowed as many as 14,000 spectators a good view of the orchestra. 
The design of the theater at Epidaurus is so effective that it is still in use today. And the acoustics are so perfect that no electrified sound system is needed when performances are held at the site. What is a cromlag? Translated from Celtic. The word cromlech means circular place and refers to a circle of standing stones. Cromlechs are either circular or semicircular arrangements of megaliths. There are many theories about the function of these large scale Neolithic sites, including the idea that they served some kind of religious function. However, like the Menhir alignments in France, cromlechs remain a mystery. What is porcelain? Porcelain is a type of fine ceramic that supposedly got its name from Marco Polo. Who first visited China from Europe in the 13th century? There are two types of porcelain, hard paste, known as true porcelain, and soft paste, known as artificial porcelain. Hard paste porcelain was first developed in China in the 7th or 8th century and wasn't seen in Europe until the early 18th century. Porcelain is made of fine white clay and requires a very high temperature in the kiln when fired. Blue and white painted porcelain from the Ming period is among the most expensive and most highly sought after ceramics in the world. Ming painters used cobalt glazes from Persia and designed heavily outlined images. Dragons and nature themes were very popular. <laughs>